Raytheon Missiles and Defense is the premier air dominance provider in the world. From air-to-air -air capability to sustaining the air dominance capability on the ground using air-to-ground effects. The air dominance uh, concept uh, as a whole has shifted over the years. Air, air dominance in, in the past has always been viewed as an air-to-air -air domain, which is which is obviously very important to, to Raytheon Missile and Defense and the AMRAM program and the capability that it provides. And so air-to-air -air and air-to-ground are key parts of what we're actually providing to that air dominance picture, but so is the way that we interpret the data that those weapon systems provide back into the system for how do I sustain air dominance, how do I gain air dominance, and what is my objective once I have ob obtained that, that dominance over that airspace. AMRAM brings the, the uh, indomitable capability uh, through a legacy, but also future capability built through the iteration of hardware and software uh, that continue to, to keep it viable in the future fight. Programs like the Joint Strike Missile and the Stormbreaker uh, Smart Weapon provide that enduring la land strike capability that provide the total air dominance package. In the world of AMRAM right now, the, the, it's a really exciting time. So it's a, it's a weapon that's been in the inventory and it's been in service for a long time doing the air dominance mission, uh, supporting 40 nations at this point, uh, has over 5,000 uh, test shots and is a combat proven air to air capability. The AMRAM program uh, is, is fielding the F3R and SIP3 capability to be able to bring the, the D3 and C8 variants of the AMRAM missile into the inventory to keep resiliency within the obsolescence of the weapon, but also increase the ability to address significant real world uh, threats as they evolve to ensure that this platform uh, su supports air dominance for the US and its allies well into the future. That's going through a testing and formal uh, introduction out into the fleet now, and, and that's, that's actually the, the latest version of the missile that, that's being fielded. AMRAM's current test profile includes a, a, a long-range test shot, the extended range time of flight test shot of the, uh, the F-15 uh, Strike Eagle, uh, as well as the Super Hornet uh, testing of the F-3R missile, proving out the capability that F-3R and SIP-3 bring to the fleet. The AMRAM F3R program doesn't change the, the, the outer mode line of the weapon, and so uh, we talked about we talked about its integration on the Super Hornet and the Strike Eagle. But importantly, we're looking at the fifth gen fighters like the the F35 series, and so it's important to maintain that form factor so that it, it can maintain its position on the internal bays and maintain the low observable capabilities of that F35. The Stormbreaker Smart Weapon built here at Raytheon Missiles and Defense in Tucson, Arizona. It's a precision air-to-ground weapon uh, designed to go after targets at standoff ranges, utilizing its tri-mode seeker uh, to be able to, to see the targets, multi-effects warhead to be able to provide that lethality, uh, as well as its processing power and network-enabled capability using you know, its onboard weapons data link. The Stormbreaker Smart Weapon Program has had an exciting past couple years actually, uh, moving through a lot of the initial development and production work, and we're getting into the really exciting time of platform integration, fielding, and actually getting the weapon out and seeing what it can do. Raytheon Missiles and Defense is currently ramping up uh, production of the Stormbreaker Smart Weapon uh, and leaning forward into the initial operating capability uh, and early operational capability across multiple platforms, including the Strike Eagle, uh, the Joint Strike Fighter, and, and the next step in the program is actually to declare uh, initial operating capability for, for the Super Hornet, which the Navy is uh, aggressively looking towards. Uh, and similarly, on the F-35, uh, the, the B variant for the Marine Corps, looking forward to the A and C models to follow after that, and then full capability on the platform uh, in, in the future. Raytheon's vision of the future for, for the Stormbreaker Smart Weapon is, is that it is a universal air-to-ground weapon for, for the U.S. and its partners. And so the, the increase in capacity, the increase in production to, to be able to deliver the volume and mass required to be able to service uh, any target anywhere around the world. Raytheon Missiles and Defense and Kongsberg Defense in Norway partnered to develop the Joint Strike Missile uh, 
The partnership actually started off with the, the Naval Strike Missile and, and evolved into the air-launched uh, Joint Strike Missile, the long-range cruise missile capability uh, designed to fit internally into the F-35 to maintain its low observable capability and engage targets at standoff ranges. Raytheon Missiles in Defense and, and Kongsberg uh, are working to increase the production capacity right now. Initial fielding aligns with the, uh, the fielding on the F-35 in 2025. Production is ongoing right now. The Norwegian facility is actually stood up and producing uh, Joint Strike Missiles as we speak. Our portion of it is to focus specifically on the U.S. warfighter, uh, but it is a partnership to satisfy the total global need for Joint Strike Missile.